If I'm not creating in order to improve people's lives, in order to help them be healthier or to feel better about themselves, then I don't feel like I deserve anybody to be there um, watching me and supporting me. Welcome back to the Bianca Taylor podcast. Today, I'm really excited to get into a super juicy conversation with somebody who I find so inspiring and have realized how aligned our paths are. She is a creator, artist, just really expressive person and a vegan queen too, (laughs) Sophia Esperanza. And Juicy. (laughs) <laughs> and juicy. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. And your house is beautiful and your cats are amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's just kind of get into a little bit of your background story for people who maybe don't know, don't know your story because you've had this huge transition where you were known for being a model and 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 doing this thing and and blowing up on social media. Mm. And then you made it big shift. So, right. Yeah. Let's just take it from the top. Yeah. So, um, it's really interesting to gain a following when you're pretty young and I feel like it's happening even younger now, right? Like people, kids, they're, they're just so young. And so I gained it at a time where I really didn't know what to do with it. And so really all I was doing is growing up like most people do, but just on a digital platform, which is so unique and new, or it was for me. And yeah, I feel like over the years, it's just slowly been refined and refined. And now it's just truly reflective um, to, to me and what my, my purpose is and who I am. And so I started off on Vine. Do you remember that app? Yeah. Gosh, it was, it was so terrible. I didn't know that you started out on Vine. <laughs> yeah, app, the Vine wasn't terrible, but um, my content, like I said, I was growing up. I was like partying all the time. I was doing tons of things that, you know, teenagers do. and. Um, so it really just impacted the content that I put out. And so I got known for twerking in a car and doing skits with my boyfriend at the time and, um, just like being, being over the top and crazy. And Mm so I started off with this like very specific kind of image. And then there was a, I guess like a, uh, people just wanted to keep seeing that. So anytime that I would try to like shift it around and change it, there was like a lot of resistance and friction. People would be really vocal about it. And so, yeah, I just was very aware that that's how I started and I needed to get away from that because that wasn't just my full image. And so Mm -hmm. um, I got really into the gym. I have a pretty like addictive extreme personality. So Mm -hmm. I swapped one thing for another thing, went fully into just the gym and working out all the time, but not really like from a place of health or knowing what I was doing. I wasn't eating enough calories. I was just working out and burning all the fat in my body and was like, yeah, I'm ripped. Um, and then eventually went into that to product modeling for fitness brands. So like protein powders and stuff like that. And then eventually um, I became vegan and I just wanted to promote you know, companies and brands that were vegan. And and at that time I was modeling. So I was like, well, I'm not going to model for high fashion brands and promote fur, leather, suede, and all of that. So what can I do? And fast fashion was like this beaming light for me. It was there, no animal products because it's really cheap garments and um, went heavy into that for like four years. And then realized that the fast fashion industry is also horrific and was just like, oh, can I get a break? Can I just find something subtle in it? without discovering that it's just this dark industry. Um, So anyways, I got out of that. And that time in my life is when I fully started to work with brands that were really in alignment with me, um, put out the content that was really in alignment with me and just be my authentic self. And I guess that's the journey of life, right? Getting more back to that full circle. But that just happened a few years ago. And that was really the start, I feel like, of my my life in a lot of ways. Mm. So, Mm -hmm. 
That's so that's so interesting how you you started on Vine. I didn't know that, but yeah, I, I usually I, don't tell people that because they just like, shh, like and they're like, up. I gotta find these old. Videos. Yeah, it's cool. It's crazy. It's it's crazy looking at different versions of yourself. I'm sure you look back at old oh videos of yourself. Yeah. It's like, it's yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and and I I first came across you online when you were doing still doing a lot of modeling, mm -hmm. and then I remember you first um, talked about making the decision to have an explant mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Yeah. And then you downsized the implant. And I remember, cause at that time I had had the thought or like I had the, the deep knowing that I needed mm. to have an explant. And so I went on YouTube to see like, who's talking about explants and I came across your video and that was when I started following you, I oh, think wow. actually. Yeah. Okay, so our boobs brought us together. Our boobs brought us together. <laughs> <laughs> Should we let them like thank each other for a second? <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you for bringing me this friend. No <laughs> But but yeah, I, I remember yeah. Um, I remember following that and then seeing like I I didn't know that you were vegan. I had seen you know modeling stuff and I was like, oh cool, she's vegan too. And mm -hmm. then kind of you know started following you there. And um, so I kind of started watching your journey really when you were like amidst that transition, right? Um, and it's been it's been really inspiring for me because something that you know you you and I have talked about is how I've been in this like place of transitioning by sharing more content about my spirituality. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have this podcast. A lot of my con content here is about spirituality and mm -hmm. living in your truth. And um, it can be scary to start talking about things that you're like, this is what my soul needs to express and talk about. But this thing is the thing that I know is going to make me money and give Absolutely. me a lot of likes. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so what was that like for you when you started to make that transition? Well, I'm sure you can definitely understand this. Um, you get so used to this form, this physical form, and whether it be wearing the clothes, you know, working with brands, they're, they're, they want this image. And so when I started to become comfortable and used to the idea of removing the implants, I was like, I'm going to be really happy about this, but am I ever going to get work again? And the reality is, yes, both of us will. And it's just, it's just fear, you know, um, and comfortability. And so, yeah, I had to deal with all of those things at once. But really, I do attribute a lot of coming to terms with my true form with people that I've surrounded myself with in the last few years, because I even had partners who were like, I'm happy with you, are, you know, that you're with who you are like this. But just so you know, I would love you or I would you know appreciate your body if you didn't have all of these things. And I actually have never heard that before. Like that mm -hmm. might seem really bizarre to some people, but the people that I was with um, just like four years ago would say the exact opposite. Like, mm, I wouldn't do that. I think it's going to look terrible. I don't think you'll ever get work again. Or um, it makes you hot. You know, those, these like awful, ignorant statements. Yeah, shallow and, stuff. Yeah. And I, and I put up with that for so long. And um, it really became a part of my worth. Uh, and so, yeah, I was just detaching from that at the same time that I was detaching from modeling. And it's funny because everything at the same, at the same time started happening. I was like, I don't want to model, um, for fast fashion brands. I want these things out. And it was really me just shedding all of these layers, this ex exoskeleton that was never reflective of me in the first place. So, um, I, when I first went to the doctor a few years ago, I wanted them fully out, but because I've had them in for so long and they were so large for my frame, he was like, they're going to shrivel and you're going to have depressions and, you know, it's not going to be the best thing for you. So take out the large implants, put the smallest one in we can, let your skin shrink back over time. And then eventually, whenever you're ready, just fully take them out. I also had like a double bubble. So we had to do like revision on the fold and all of this stuff. So I did that. And then immediately was like, cool, but I can't wait now for the next step of this just to fully get them out. So mm -hmm. that's where I am and I'm just ready. I don't know if this happened for you, but the, the closer I got to my surgery date, the more uncomfortable oh, yes. they became. Like mm -hmm. you're aware, you're hyper aware of them and they're so separate to you. They already were for me, but like extra separate. And I even started to, I feel like my, you know, the mind, mind is such a powerful thing. I felt like I kept, or I am making like aches and pains happen just because of, I don't know, muscle memory. I have no idea, but. Yeah. Cause you're, you're so ready to let go of it. And a way I like to describe it to people who, who don't have implants and can't quite understand what that feeling of being comfortable is, is 
when you have on a really tight, uncomfortable pair of jeans mm. and you're wearing it all day and you're like, I can't fucking wait to get home to take these off and put my sweatpants on or yeah. be in my underwear. Imagine that, except you can't take those jeans on. You have to have a doctor take them off and it's going to yeah. cost you money and take a lot of time. So you have to just keep wearing them and it's squeezing into your stomach every time you sit down and it just feels uncomfortable. That's kind of what it feels like. Yeah. And the more you think about it, the more you become aware. Like you said, I, I definitely was experiencing that as well as I got closer. Um, I just, it was like, I have, to, I have to get them out. I started to be able to, to just really feel them. And also it's on this journey of really uh, coming into your authentic truth you are becoming so in tune with your body. Mm -hmm. And it's like every day you just become more in tune with your body and your intuition. And so you you really start to hear your body talking to you and feeling how it affects your breathing, how it affects your posture. And you just start to become, you know, just fully ready to fully ready to move on. So yeah. I, I, I totally know how you feel, but it feels so good. You're gonna feel so happy when you wake up from surgery. I know I am. And like watching you express that makes me so excited just for you because it is a tremendous amount of relief and not just physically but what it there's a ripple effect and it's just ongoing and it's it's so beautiful and as a dancer like I'm a dancer too mm -hmm. because we are so in tune with our bodies already I feel like it might add an extra layer of being so hyper aware mm -hmm. because we're feeling something that is so you know foreign to the body so mm -hmm. yeah it's um yeah, I, and, and I can't wait just to like be able to go and take classes again and, and to dance freely. Like everything that I do is to compensate for the fact that tensing up certain muscles in the front push the implants out or, you know, mm -hmm. make them hurt. So I can't wait just to be free in my body, which I'm sure you're experiencing right now. Yes, yes. I'm, you know, I'm three months post-explant mm -hmm. now. So I've been at a place where I feel so much more recovered and I can work out again and I can dance and I just feel, I feel so much lighter. The biggest thing that I've noticed is uh, improvement in my mental health because mm. it's been just three straight months of feeling really optimistic and not getting so down when something unfortunate happens. Yeah. And isn't, isn't it crazy that taking your implants out would do that? Like you would never really draw a line to connect the two, but it just goes to show that these affect us so much more than physically for some people. Yeah, so. exactly. Because, you know, when you have a foreign object inside your body, your nervous system is on high alert because it doesn't feel safe. And that's why our bodies create those capsules around yeah. it because it's our body like having a, an, a, a response to it. It's really sad, actually. Like the things that we do to our bodies, um, and again, you know, do whatever you want in this life. Uh, some people might, be very extremely happy with the choices that they've made to mod modify or alter their body. But um, when it comes to that and you know what the body is doing in order to essentially protect you, protect it, it's really sad. Um, it's not just a capsule. It's a response in order to keep us well. So mm -hmm. it makes me just like hurt for the body, all that she is, and just makes me want to do even more to to lift her up versus like keep her on high alert, like you said. And I have autoimmune, so I have inflammation and my T cells are going crazy all day anyways. So just to like add something like that in a moment in my life where I'm trying to, you know, clean up all this damage that limes and all of this stuff is done in my body like this. I just need this out just to help the whole system. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm really excited for you to come home to your body and to Thank start you. and then start that journey of, of recovery because yeah. then that's a whole new um that's a whole nother journey is is going through recovery from a procedure like that and just honoring your body with rest and 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 you're really good about about being healthy and like taking care of your body in that way. So that's gonna be, you know, the next chapter which yeah. I'm I'm really excited for you about. Thank you. Um I wanted to bring up Something that you did that I thought was really cool, uh, you archived or deleted like mm. a like your whole Instagram feed essentially, right? And you and then you made a post saying that you were kind of starting this new chapter where you were going going to post what was authentic and you're sharing more stuff about food because you now cook food, which is amazing, by the way. Because I've, I've just had, just I've, now though, it's I, taken me years, but I'm finally cooking food. It's, <laughs> 
<laughs> but you're you're yeah. you're so Thank you're so you. you're so good at it. You like this whatever salsa you made that I had at your house was literally the best salsa I had. And Are you I serious? Yeah, Thank and I you. and I said that to I said that to when I was sitting there with like Nimai and Cam and Ryan. I was like, this is the best salsa <laughs> I've had. And Nimai was like, that's a big statement. And I was like, I really mean it. <laughs> it's really good. Thank you. Every time I make my salsas, like it'll be the favorite for like one person. And because I when I did filming um for Ubbles in the Table, we did like three all at once and everybody had their own favorite. And which is great, but I'm like, okay, well, now I need to like find everyone's favorite for salsa. I'm obsessed with salsa. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. Mexican, so <laughs> well, are you Mexican? I'm Co- you? Cuban and Colombian. Oh, okay. But also a salsa fan. <laughs> oh, and this salsa too. <laughs> and that's also too. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, I swiped everything. Yeah. I um I just was like ready for it was just the next layer, right? Like shedding more layers, getting out of fast fashion modeling, like making the decision to finally get these out. And two, like looking back on all of my old posts, I don't want to look at my my implants anymore. Um, there are some things now that, you know, I've posted since then and all of that, but I know the mental state that I'm in right now and it's such a better place. And so I don't know when I, I don't know if you can resonate with this, but like looking back on old posts, knowing the stress that I brought in order to take that photo, how hard I worked to get a perfect angle or, um, just how inauthentic it was mm-hmm. uh, for me. I just didn't want to see that anymore. And also, I think it was just a test for me to see if I could prioritize myself over this value that's been placed on on social media. And I remember we were talking about how like certain posts with like the highest engagement, like hovering over those with my finger going, well, maybe I should leave these up from a place of vanity, maybe from a place of... um well, brands look at this stuff and I want to show them that I can get, you know, really great engagement at times. So I just, yeah, it was, it was a test for me. And I'm, and I feel like I, I succeeded in a lot of ways. And since then I've just been so much happier getting rid of all that. Mm -hmm. Just detaching from that, um, the relationship that our ego makes with Mm. external validation and vanity and social media and social media has created this whole new level of, it was like, before we had social media, it was how popular you were at school mm. or if, I don't know, if, pe- if people liked you, how many friends came to your birthday party. Yeah. That, that was like- Oh, I remember that. The good old days. <laughs> that was- Dropping when, it in their folder. Just- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or like, or like who has like the new sketchers that light up when you walk. Like that was what gave you this like validation yeah. of like, oh, they're cool. And now we have this physical- um, like representation. It's not just like a fleeting day of, oh, they had a lot of people come to their birthday party. Yeah. It's like always there. Birthday party with every post. Yeah, it's a birthday party with every yeah. post. And <laughs> we 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 create this attachment to it and yeah. we start to attach our worth to it. And it's it's a really it's a really big thing to to say, okay, this post had a hundred thousand likes. I'm gonna delete it. Mm. So I think that's really like and I think that's really awesome that you did that because it's especially for a lot of girls who want so many girls are like they want to be a model like they want mm. to be an Instagram model or they want to just like m- you know work with work with these brands that you said I'm not going to work with them anymore because they're mm. not sustainable they don't line with my ethics and for them to see that you can move forward in something that's more aligned with your your purpose your dharma your soul and like just forge a completely new path. I think that's really huge. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, it's what you said a second ago reminded me of something that I was thinking about on the way here. How some people might aspire to have the followers and the career and all of these things that we do. And I was wondering for a second when I was driving, like as a, the the creator sitting or a content creator, not the creator. I don't want to sound like God for a second. Um, <laughs> but like someone who creates content and, and gives it to people, I feel like because it's such a privilege to have people that want to learn from you and are just there to be a part of your community, it's an even greater responsibility to add value to their lives. So if I'm not creating in order to improve people's lives, in order to help them be healthier or to feel better about themselves, then I don't feel like I deserve anybody to be there um, 
watching me and supporting me. And that's just me. So with that new lens, especially this year, it hasn't been limiting in any way. In fact, it's been inspiring Mm. just to walk around knowing that, yeah, like I can add value to people's life. What a freaking honor. And so it allows me to go back inside of myself and go, well, what are the things that I can, what are my skill sets? What are my passions? What's my art? And do it in an an authentic way. When you heal people or when, you know, when you're around people and they're healing you, it's it's a back and forth. So it's just healing both ways. And for so long, I feel like people just constantly dished out love to me, you know, love this, love this. You look great, blah, blah, blah. What have I done? maybe, you know, for fitness goals or maybe for some vegan food at the time. But really when it came to like the modeling thing, so empty. And so now I feel like I'm doing a bit of catch up work for every single person who's been there supporting me for years. So Mm. just trying to give back as much as I can. Yeah, that's such a great perspective to to look at because I think there's this race to get a lot of followers, Mm. to get a platform. And now, especially with apps like TikTok, it's just People can be so young and just receive millions of followers so quickly Mm -hmm. and have just no real connection to the amount of people that are viewing them and how it can be an it can be an honor, an opportunity to share something that inspires them, that moves them or that um, allows them to learn or, Mm -hmm. or grow in ways rather than just. Um, like taking, taking, right. taking, like give me all of your love, give right. me all of your life. Because it's an energy transfer. Everything is in this life. So if you are, and I guess it comes with age, right? Like I can't hold these children who are 11, 12, 13 to the same standard that I would, you know, someone who's older, your brain's not developed yet. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's sad um, looking back on the things that I've done. I, I feel like, oh, why did I do that? But growing up, you figure things out Mm -hmm. and you have different perspective and different life experiences that um, mold your choices and your art and your contribution. But it is an honor to have every single person there. And in the life that we live, you know, in terms of veganism, we see animals as individuals. And so I want to start looking more at the number on the screen, the, you know, 2 million, whatever it is, as individuals. And so when you do that, it makes it so much easier to be mindful of what you're creating because you have an impact on literally 2 million plus individuals or whatever the number is. And Mm -hmm. even if it was five, that is a great responsibility. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and, you know, with social media and the way that it's growing and the way that we see that this celebrity has 120 million and this thing had a hundred thousand likes, it's really easy for us to just look at it as numbers and, and we need more numbers and we need more numbers. And we do the same thing with money mm-hmm. and we take advantage of it. And we forget that even if it's five views, that's five human beings mm-hmm. that saw that for a moment and had a potential of being impact. Right. And it's, it, it, it really does matter. You know, sometimes it's, um, you know, if, if I, if I make a post and I'm like, oh, that post didn't do that well. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, let's say I, I made a post and it got like 3000 likes and like, right. that's for me, like not, great right, right. it's so easy for me to just think that and i have to pause and catch myself and say three thousand people is a lot a if lot there were three thousand people. people in a stadium with me and they were all looking at me it's like telling them oh this wasn't enough so in turn you aren't enough and if you could start looking at it like that right like the individuals then you have to not retrain but you have to start thinking about the words and what they actually mean and then change, you know, the words that you use. Um, Language is very important, especially when we, you know, talk about veganism. We talk about, you know, animal flesh or whatever it is, animal secretions, like say what it really is. And Mm -hmm. people aren't numbers and animals aren't numbers. And so, uh, but it's very hard because when you're in the position that you and I are in, we're programmed to just think numbers, numbers, numbers. Mm-hmm. We become like AI in a sense, right? Like you just said, like, all oh, this didn't do well, or we scan likes. We're, we're constantly comparing and we, we're literally becoming like AI, which is crazy. Um, I mean, we already are, are, you know, intelligence, but like it's becoming really artificial. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, I... I'm happy that you are stepping out of that too, because it is, 
it's so limiting. And it just like getting, you know, your implants out have affected so many more areas of your life and your being. Detaching from that mindset when it comes to social media and likes and engagement, it affects your life in its entirety as well. Mm -hmm. It's a pour over effect and it's so much better to live that way. Mm -hmm. And I love that you brought up language too, because that is a huge factor in our relationship with all of these things, like our Mm -hmm. relationship with our body, whether it's our chest or the way we look, our relationship with social media or our, our followers or what we're doing, the way that we speak to ourselves about it, you know, saying, oh, this didn't do that well. This mm-hmm. didn't get enough engagement. Instead of saying, I'm I'm really excited to share this thing and I hope that it inspires some people. Right. And if it inspires a lot of people, great. And if it only inspires a few people, cool. Right. And, and there's so many other factors. There's algorithms. There's, you know, shadow banning. If you posted something the day before, that might have been a little controversial or whatever. There's so many other factors. So um, it's not always just you, you know, Mm -hmm. or what you did. Um, And at the end of the day, regardless of all of that, the less you pay attention to it, the more you get to live in this world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what matters the most. At least that's what brings me the most happiness. Like doing this, sitting here and just speaking, like it's almost become foreign. Like, I don't know if you've ever felt this way, but being like social in school and like talking all the time and interacting with humans. And then all of a sudden we became behind the screen And then diving back into like a social situation, it's almost like anxiety ridden or it can be at times, Mm -hmm. at least for me in the beginning it was. And it made this feel unnatural and it shouldn't be that way. Mm -hmm. I'd rather feel uncomfortable on camera than be uncomfortable in a situation like this. So I think that's another impact that social media has had on me. And so I want to be surrounded by more people because I don't want to feel that way. Yeah, definitely. So. It it definitely can create a separation and not just separation because we end up only talking digitally instead of in person, but also because we like you you talked about like us like scanning and like looking at the numbers and everything and it's also like we look at what somebody posts and we summarize them as that. Yeah. She's a model. Well, she's actually all these other things. She's also Mm. an activist. She's also a speaker. She's also Mm. a daughter, a great friend. And we forget that. And then when when people meet, there can be just this wall up Mm -hmm. and it doesn't create um, the opportunity for like depth and connection. And that's why, you know, it's amazing to be a part of the community that, you know, we're connected to where we get to meet people who are all of these different creators and artists and, and, doing cool things online, but none of that matters. Yeah. None of it actually matters because we actually, we actually like put all of that aside and just like, let me connect with you, this soul, this person behind the screen. And I think it's really important for people to, to be aware of that. Yeah. And I, obviously my birthday was a very emotional one. Um, but it's, it's overwhelmingly beautiful when you find people that are there with you, like, um, our, you know, BC, right? Mm -hmm. So, he said something one time that I didn't even realize I did, but right when I met him, I guess I asked, what do you do? But it came after, he, he says, I don't remember any of this, after he was like being really goofy and weird. And I was like, who are you? Like, what do you do? Um, and I, when he told me that, I was like, oh, like, I don't, I don't want to ask, you know, I don't want to be like that. I don't like when people ask me that like right off the bat either. And um, for the last few years, I've been asking like, what's your art? Like, wh- you know, wh- how do mm-hmm. you express yourself or, or, you know, changing it up a bit. And I find that when you ask people those questions, it then passes the torch in order for them to go ask that question. And then it just keeps on going. It's like, you know, knock on effect and, um, hopefully will allow us to put forward the things that we're most proud of versus what we think society wants to hear or see, or, you know, how they value us by. So. Um, yeah, like our community is so special and I want that for everybody. I'm sure people have communities and they're happy, but like what we have is so special and I can't wait to grow it and to learn more about people. And like you said, like when we're there, we don't talk about what we do or anything. It's just, Mm -hmm. it's just the human. In fact, sometimes I forget what we all do. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I agree with, um, changing that normal kind of introductory question of what do you do to questions like what are you passionate about or 
What's your favorite color? You know, yeah, what's your <laughs> what's your favorite color? Yeah. Do you like to dance? What kind of music do you listen yeah. to? Um where you know, where are you from? Like you, it doesn't have to always be about like what do you do? And I find that uh, you know, living in LA and and, and meeting a lot of people who work in entertainment mm-hmm. and social media, uh whenever people ask, you know, what do I do? I I don't lead with content mm-hmm. creator because it's a very narrow perspective of who I am. Right. You know, I'll, I'll tell them that I'm a coach, I'm a I'm an entrepreneur and I'm like and I make content and stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like other in there I do that too, but because there's this yeah, there's just this kind of stigma that comes mm-hmm. with oh, you are an Instagram model or you right. post on YouTube and and then people can just create these assumptions and box you in. Yeah, and, and and box you in. And so I wonder what what has your experience been like with that? Because I'm sure that as you've made this transition, people who knew you from the past, or maybe they they know your name, and yeah. so they meet you and they're like, <laughs> "Oh, you're oh you're that um that fashion model," yeah. and you're like, "What? Well, 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 it used to be. Uh, aren't you that girl who twerks?" Um, <laughs> and then it was, "Oh." I love your modeling pictures. And when I when that when I started to get that, I was like, this hurts my ears. <laughs> well, I don't want to be known for that. Like uh super stoked that people like my pictures, but like, oh, it really showed me how empty this the stuff that I was putting out. Um, and even if I did model, I should have been putting out other things at the same time to really show more of who I was. I didn't want to just be known for just pictures. And um, yeah, so I started to get that. And then it was you know, the activism as I started to become more vocal and the way that made me felt um, feel when people would say, thank you so much for your activism for the animals. And then it became, you know, people would message me and say, my whole family has reversed our diabetes by following, you know, your, your food and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like the way that makes you feel, um, you, you can't beat it. And it puts you, redirects you on the path that you're trying to you know, or you have a little bit of in your life, but it's like, no, you need to be fully here. You need more of that. You have to help people. Um, and so, yeah, I, I feel like over the years it's just changed, but more than ever now I'm, I'm, uh, grateful to hear and proud to hear when people say this message resonated with me, or this made me feel better about myself, or I've seen your whole transformation from vine to now and I've taken it along with you and we're, mm-hmm. we're, we're on the same path together. It makes me emotional and feel so connected to human beings that I've never even met in person. Mm-hmm. And that's what life's about. So yeah, those are all my labels. Maybe there's more, I don't know. Uh, uh, world-class salsa maker. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take that one. <laughs> yeah, and the the great thing about it too is that it gives people permission. It gives them that uh safety and that freedom to do that themselves because yeah whether they are you know they feel like they've been boxed into making content or being a certain type of way online or they are an accountant who really wants to be an artist Mm -hmm. or they're they're doing something that's just not in alignment with their soul's calling right and they see somebody like you and they're like wow she had millions of followers she was had had a successful modeling career and she said this isn't an alignment with me she she pivoted her path to mm. do something meaningful um and you know like that really resonated with her with her soul like that means i can do it too mm. and then it creates a ripple effect and then they do it and let's say like bob the accountant who decides like i'm going to pursue djing because i love music mm-hmm. and then he does it and then his neighbor is like that's so cool that he did that i can do that too and then right. it, and that's how we start to create more ripples of change yeah yeah that's how it starts you literally have to be the change that you want to see in the world or contribute in the ways that you want to see amplified in the world so if we want to see more real we have to start being more real if we want you know and not just physically like real with each other honest open transparent um yeah it's it's incredible like the visual that i think about with that significant change in my life by you know throwing all that away and um, changing to something new was like driving down the road and then having a fork in the road and saying to your left is you can see for miles and it's just full of like riches potentially and, you know, things, material, mm-hmm. pe- tons of people, um, tons of support and all eyes on you. And then to the right, 
you can't see miles ahead. You can just see what's right there, but it's peaceful and it's beautiful and it's serene, like a tree blowing in the wind. And that's it. But it's a big question mark and it's a big unknown. Scarier to veer right because you just don't know what's going to come from that. But mm -hmm. how freaking exciting um, to struggle a bit, you know, like to just figure things out and to just be open to receive. And that's the path that I think for myself, I'm happy to be on, but I hope more people take. It's, it's a much better way to live. Mm -hmm. It's like that uh, poem that we had to read in fourth grade, the, the, the Robert Frost poem. It's like, I took the path less traveled. Yeah. That's in my house. Oh, really? Yeah, like, uh, do not go where the, or Maybe it's not not the same one then. I, I may, maybe oh, I'm okay. not. I don't remember how it goes. I just remember reading that poem and like having to break it down in the fourth grade. And that's basically yeah. what it said. It's like this path is a fork in the road. This path I know well. Mm. This one's less traveled. Okay, but that's the one that I'm going to take essentially. And you know, yeah. Do not go where the path may lead. Instead, go where there is no path and leave a tr and leave a trail or may something like that. May, um, yeah. yeah, maybe. And I, I like that you said. You know, you said something about how it's it's a struggle but it's beautiful because essentially we have like before we even do the thing that we thought we were supposed to do or the thing that we thought was going to make us a lot of money or the thing that we thought was going to make us feel confident before all of that we had this yearning to be something mm -hmm. to be wise or really loving or nurturing or helpful to the community like our our child self had this big dream yeah. and then we get kind of lost along the way and then we get to that fork in the road, but when we go take the path less traveled and we go through those struggles, those struggles are what sculpt us into that thing that we wanted to be, that big overarching goal that we ultimately wanted to be. Absolutely. And we and we manifest that. And then one day when you're a couple of years down the path, you're like, oh my God, I created the life that I actually always wanted. And had I not taken that, that leap of faith, I would have I would have I would have gotten here eventually, but I would have had to start way later because right. I, I would have kept going down a path that made me unhappy. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, coupled with change is pain. Like it's uncomfortable. Change and growth. I mean, think about just in your body physically, you have growing pains and it's a, it's a sign that you are growing. And so it's the same thing in life. And a lot of people might look at the following that we have or the brand partnerships that we might do and think, oh, these people are, you know, loaded or, you know, they got it all figured out. And the reality is, is like some people with the biggest followings don't really have a lot of money, don't have everything figured out, mm -hmm. um, are going on their own journey. They might be struggling mentally and then also have their own struggles. So um, I think for a while when I would talk about like this new path that I was taking, people were like, oh, well, you're probably fine. You've been modeling for years. Well, I paid out of pocket for my holistic limes treatment for years. Like every single thing that I had just boom, 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 because insurance doesn't cover anything that works. Um, um, <laughs> so yeah, I did that and just wanted to feel good in my body though. And then also just gave it up to animal sanctuaries, never even like saved the receipts, just did not know what I was doing with money. And so when I made this change, when I say struggle, I would assume a lot of people go like, what kind of struggle can it really be? But um yeah, there's so much on the back end that you might just never know. And um, when I induced that struggle, I felt like I deserved it though. I had for so long gotten so much easy money. I just showed up. It was my physical body that was that was the job. Um, and I remembered the happiest times in my life where when my mom would give me like a dollar fifty to go to the corner store. And I would want five candies, but I could only afford one or two. When you have this abundance of choice, um, it's almost fun sometimes not to be able just to reach in and grab everything and just have what you have. It makes you so much more appreciative for mm -hmm. those things. And so I think I lost the value of money. I lost the value of security and things. And so I wanted to feel that all over again, like a normal human being. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. That's been that's been a really it's it's a fun thing for me now going through. So, yeah, that's a really that's a really uh, special kind of part of your journey to experience and to like like I said like sculpt you into this this person that you want to be. That's like so um, intentional and like really just like soaks up everything that you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. Where as before maybe you were kind of just going through it so quickly. 
And when things are moving too fast, how can you possibly slow down to see the details? Like Mm -hmm. you literally have to pump the brakes. And I don't want to die young. I don't want to live fast die young. I don't want to trudge over everything and be explosive in this world. I'd rather go slower, uh, a more calm pace, enjoy the details of life, like see the bugs on the ground walking, you know, underneath my feet. Like I I want to see these things again because that's who I was before Mm -hmm. I got caught up in all the external factors that influenced me to derailed me, I guess, essentially. So just, just full circle and coming back. And it's, it's kind of, peaceful because you have a you have a guiding star and it's you as a kid like Mm -hmm. and it's not an adult it's not a shaman telling you what to do it's for me it's just my old self my young self and so uh yeah it's it's a beautiful thing and it's so fun to watch other people's journeys as well I feel like um I I know how much relief it's given to me over the years so I just know when I look at everybody else that are you know in that same position I'm Mm -hmm. like you're relieved and that makes me happy for you. So yeah, coming back to that uh, child childlike essence mm-hmm. that we that we had, and that's I talk about that with my clients sometimes when it comes to self expression and getting in touch with like your authentic self. And a lot of people say, "Well, I don't know where to start. Like, I don't mm-hmm. even know what I like. I don't know what I care about." And I usually have them do an exercise where they have to do some activities that they like to do as a kid. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it could be as basic as coloring in a, a coloring book. It could be baking. Mm. It could be painting, writing poetry. And it's crazy just by giving people that assignment to just do something that you love to do as a kid. Yeah. Do something you love to do as a kid with no like desired outcome. Just do Mm -hmm. it for the feeling of doing it. How much realization you have in doing that. And you Mm -hmm. realize like, oh my gosh, when I, when I slow down and I do something that I love just because I love it. I start to remember who I am and who I want to be and why I came here. Absolutely. And um, yeah, you said something there. Um, when you when you speak to people, it's like, I, I'm in therapy. And anytime that I feel like I have taken something from therapy and applied it and it really worked, mm-hmm. it's been when somebody has given me permission to do the things that for some reason I've been so afraid to do or express. And it just shows how many restraints we literally have on ourselves. And Mm -hmm. it takes someone coming up and just unbuckling one and then the other and then the next. And um, it's so freeing. And yeah, that's, that's really beautiful that you do that and and take it back to the basics. And um, I'm sure you help a lot of people just in doing that, which is just do, do just try, like, don't be afraid just to, just to experience and and figure it out. So. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and fo- tapping into that just um, embodiment of of your your true self, like the you before you worry about making money, before you worry about getting followers or getting that career that you think is going to make you happy. Mm-hmm. Like before, like rewind before all of that. Like who were you as a kid? Like what were your dreams? What did what made you happy? What made you light up? Yeah, tap into a little bit of that and. Um, and as you do that, like we said, the ripple effect happens and you will inspire other people. To, you give them give them permission to do that as well. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love the time that we live in. <laughs> it's such a good one. It's such a good time. I'm I'm super happy to be like the age that we are because we got the we got to experience technology and all the yeah. benefits of it, but we also had a lot more time off of we, before cell phones. Oh, I wish everybody had that opportunity. I know. Like, me too. How can you ever know how it was to exist one way if you've never experienced it? It's just like eating vegan. I know I keep using this example, but we both share that. So like I couldn't possibly imagine what my body would feel like going vegan because I never have. So for Mm -hmm. me to go, oh, no, I feel healthy right now. Even if I really thought that, Mm -hmm. I did never never knew what the next level of feeling truly healthy was. So I had to experience it. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing. It's the same thing this way. Yeah. You get to that level and you're like, oh, I can't possibly ever go back. Like you've you've changed your state of being, your consciousness. Like there's there's no physical way you can. So Yeah. And and on that, I, let's just kind of like t- touch on that a little bit too. Yeah. Because veganism is something that we both uh dedicate so much of our lives to, not just by the way we eat, but the way we live, the way we shop and what we share with mm-hmm. the world. 
So it sounds like you've been, ve- how long have you been vegan? I've been vegan for about eight years. Oh, you got me beat. Um, let's see. See, competition mine. <laughs> um, no, I've been vegan for, I guess, six or seven mm-hmm. years now. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how did that spark? Um, well, I was vegetarian growing up. And then I, um, at like 13, kids put some ham underneath my cheese pizza. Uh, so I was vegetarian. And um, didn't know I was biting into it. So I bit into the pizza and they all laughed. It was like a big thing for them. Everyone was like, you know, I was the freak that was vegetarian at school. Oh, that's um, very mean. And so, yeah, they did that. And I, at this point in my life, really historically, just throughout my whole life, I want to want to be in with people. And so, um, at least before my 20s. And so I was always trying to figure out how to navigate getting in and, and being accepted and loved. And so this group of people who did this to me, I really wanted to be friends with them. And so when that happened, I sucked it up, didn't cry like I always want to do when things happen. And I just like laughed it off and realized that by me eating meat, it was like a big pat on the back from these people. Like I was in now. I was cool. Mm -hmm. I was less empathetic towards animals and and all of that. And so I became uh, or stopped being vegetarian at 13 and then 13 to basically like 1928 everything under the sun i was in texas so like it's everywhere yeah and that's literally the moment in my life that i i was completely derailed i became a bully in school i've been bullied for so long that i all of a sudden became the bully and really bad like i later on in my life have have met up with a few people or or ran into people and they literally would explain how i made them feel And it's exactly how people made me feel. You know, sometimes the most hurting people just want to hurt other people. Hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. So it did that to me, um, changed my mental state, had sleeping problems, acne, PCOS, endometriosis, like was infertile, um, developed autoimmune diseases. uh, And yeah, it just completely like messed up my entire world. So um Yeah. So when I stopped and I started to become vegan, it was because of a video. I was on social media and I had like, I think 30 followers on Instagram at this time. I was going to school. I wanted to be a doctor um, or an MD, medical doctor, and uh, was doing the Vine thing and running two wax centers. I used to work at European Wax Center. I don't know Mm -hmm. if you're ever familiar with that. Yeah. Yeah. Bikinis all day. Um, And so I saw this video and it literally stopped me in my tracks. It was a dairy farm and it was a cow getting lifted up by a crane and dumped into a dumpster alive. And my entire world just stopped. And I realized, like we talked about earlier, that I had been moving so fast for so long that when this specific moment happened in my life, Mm -hmm. I crashed into a wall. That's how it felt like. And um, that's when I started to go slower. Um, I needed to see it for myself. So I broke into factory farms and just saw it for myself. First one was a chicken farm and was awful. Stayed there for hours and just saw hearts beating out of chest and mutations just rampant. And yeah, I watched about eight or 10 chickens just die while I was there. Mm -hmm. And my life changed forever. And I decided I needed to go vegan, needed to make a game plan to do it so that I would stick in it for the long run. And for me, it was going through pescatarian, vegetarian to vegan. And I did. And I've never not once wanted to slip back into it. I mean, it's just you, you, you possibly can't when you've done, you know, certain things like that, when you've immersed yourself into their reality, like not just footage, but like when you've been there, when mm-hmm. you've smelt the smell, when you heard the cries, you've seen the tears never worth it yeah well it's like they say if um i I think maybe i think this quote is by like yoko okay right she said if um factory farms had glass walls Mm -hmm. everybody would be vegetarian yeah because we are so detached from where our food comes from and what happens in order for it to end up you know be becoming a chicken nugget and so so to that's that's really crazy that you that you went into the factory farms i never Mm. i never went that far i um uh decided i just one day looked at my dog and was like why do i eat meat if i love you and then i went vegan wow and yeah it was a very it was a very weird and i had been eating meat my whole life Mm -hmm. no vegetarians in my family like it just like hit me and i was like what and then i did research and i was like oh yeah 
this is the thing to do. Wow. But but same. I, I've never once wanted to go back to eating meat. I don't like the, anything that I that I want that maybe is indulgent, like mm-hmm. a cheeseburger or ice cream. I can have an amazing version of it that's plant based. Right. And when I see people eating meat, like I go to I go to Irwan and I walk by and they have like the rotisserie chicken mm-hmm. and stuff. I don't see that as food. I don't see that and think. Oh, like that looks so good. Like if I smell like smells that are positive, it's all the seasonings. Seasonings, it's not, yeah. Yeah, it's all the seasonings that make it taste good. Yeah. You know, and it's all about just changing. If you want that, change the ingredients. Like use something different with all the same seasonings. And Yeah. And you just brought that up. Like um, something that vegans get told a lot is like, stop bringing this up. Like, you know, you're so loud. You're, you're on repeat with this vegan message. Um, and I understand it might seem that way to sometimes see a post that someone um, is posting that might seem preachy or whatever. But imagine living in a literal world where we have to now. Our perception has changed. So we don't see a billboard for a burger. We literally see a baby sandwiched between bread. And then we see cheese, which isn't cheese. It's animal secretions. And we know what goes into that. Mm -hmm. I see a sad mother cow. I know what's been done to her in order to get that. So you literally see everything for, um, in the food world for what it is. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it, um, it puts me off when I see food, like in, in a kind of assembly line like that at a grocery store where it's next to food that, um, is vegan. Like even in the same vicinity, I feel like it's been tainted just energetically, just mm-hmm. being next to something like that. Like during Thanksgiving, oh, it was awful. Like just seeing this huge, you know, roasted turkey next to <laughs> this eggplant lasagna. Like it, it, I couldn't even, I was like, I need, I need to get out of here. I just can't even, I can't even look at this. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, that's the world that we have to live in. And we have to see it every day. If I'm on the radio, I turn it off as soon as it goes into a fast food commercial and talks about you know, using psychology in order to bring people in with the voice and the sound effects and the words and all of this. I just turn it off because that's the world that we have to live in. So Mm -hmm. sometimes it might come across very intense, but I wish people could sometimes just be a little bit empathetic and realize that we get this nonstop every day from every direction. We see people wearing fur. uh, We don't see fur. We see the animal. Like it's, it's everything. So it's a little difficult. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, uh, I think the hardest part about being vegan is not food choices by any means. It's not figuring out what to eat. Mm. It is um, living in a world that's very dark where uh, a lot of people are unwilling to just open their heart to a conversation about the ethical treatment of animals and Mm. how food can be different or how they could you know, change their habits. A lot of people are really closed off to it and that can be really, really hard, which is why we become so passionate about that. But, you know, by sharing easy, healthy, delicious vegan meals, Mm -hmm. it's a great way for people to just, just try it and just try replacing a couple meals a day. So I think it's really cool what you're doing now with food. And I'm sure also because it's like where you found a passion for like your animal activism and yeah. for cooking and the, like there's like a alignment there um so i think that that's really cool Thank because it, it gives people the opportunity to see um all of the different options yeah what it looks like um i think for so long on youtube i kept seeing <laughs> youtube what did i just say youtube uh, youtube um so it happens when you're vegan you just start losing brain cells and you can't speak <laughs> you can't yeah, youtube so um i saw like all these YouTubers putting out this idea of veganism, what was their version of veganism, which is cool. Like some people were fruitarians and some people ate 800 calories a day. And I was like, oh, this is influencing people. I haven't fully got it figured out. No one does, but let me jump on here and share what I think is maybe a more well-balanced version of veganism, mm-hmm. at least more attainable for people that are living in a, you know, a city and don't, are, don't live in Costa Rica in a fruitopia or, um, yeah. So, I felt like it was a necessary thing to get on and to share because I eat copious amounts of calories. Um, I, I was going to school to be a doctor and dropped out, but, you know, continued my education and have a little bit more knowledge as to what might sustain someone to keep in the vegan in the vegan space. Mm-hmm. I saw so many people drop out that were vegans like on YouTube that were like known for being vegan, but I knew what was going on in the back end. And I was like eating 800 calories a day, 
mostly cherry tomatoes probably won't sustain you. Um, <laughs> you might get organ failure at a certain point. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, I, I felt like we needed more of those. And ever since then, I've seen so many people do it as well, like hop on and just create really well-balanced meals. And I feel like that's what we need more of. So people get away from this idea that veganism is just simply fruits and salads, which is beautiful. And I eat mostly that. But also it's this whole other world of so many other foods that you can eat. So mm -hmm. Exactly. It, it's not, it, it doesn't, any, any type of diet or any way of eating can be restrictive. Yeah. But veganism does not have to be restrictive. I've, since I went vegan eight years ago, I have eaten, I eat way more each day. Me too. I yeah. eat way more variety of fruits, vegetables, grains. I mean, before I was eating the same three, four dead animals over and over again yeah. with broccoli or rice. Like that yeah. was, that was it. That was what I ate, you know? So now I, I just eat so much more variety. So I'm getting more nutrients mm -hmm. and I, diversity in your gut. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like more diversity in my gut microbiome and just, um, I'm, I'm more excited about food and more passionate about cooking and, and trying different meals and stuff. So, um, yeah, so thank you for for doing for doing that, creating that, thank and sharing you. more of it into the world because it it allows people to see like, oh, this can be delicious. It can be easy. It's attainable. You don't have to be like a super skilled culinary chef yeah, in order yeah. to make yummy vegan meals. And I'm going to culinary school right now, um, and I'm also going back to school to be an ND, so naturopathic doctor. And I feel like that's where now I want to take it to not only share vegan food that tastes good, like make all the classics like I've done before, like the fried oyster mushrooms and like the burgers and all that, but also like this next wave of taking tasty food mm -hmm. that's also healthy and keeping an overwhelming, um, overarching uh, motif of health at the same time. Mm -hmm. You can be vegan and you can also have things go awry and you can have uh, – a vegan meal plan that might not work for every single person because the realities are all unique and we're yeah. all dealing with different things. And to be honest, the world's so toxic with just the water and the air that we breathe and the content that we absorb to where we're all, we all come loaded with things already. So we're going to be detoxing. Mm -hmm. We're going to have autoimmune issues, some of us. So there's a lot of, it, it's, it can be complicated. So, um, that's like the next way for me. I want to create food with that more in mind so I can I can help more people not just be healthy but also like start reversing chronic health issues that might be a bit more complex mm -hmm. so. amazing amazing I Thanks. I love um it's it's interesting how it's like you've kind of come full circle in your journey but with this like deeper more aligned intention that mm -hmm. is just you know it's aligned in a lot of different ways of like veganism like doing something that's going to help people mm -hmm. um and detaching from that like uh that like social media like validation driven kind of like ego identity yeah. and just like creating this whole new path i think that's amazing and so inspiring so thank, thank you, you thank you for coming here and for sharing for sharing your story i'm so excited for you to get an explain me too yeah. No more silicone. Yeah. So no more silicone. Yeah. Did you save yours? Yeah. I, yeah I can show you I them see after. Them. I, I want to see these implants. <laughs> <laughs> show me your titties. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. I should be yeah, in a few weeks, but um, I can't wait to have you on. I want to have you on my yeah. YouTube next so we can have a convo about it. All about boobs. Yes. All about the boobies. Yeah. Where can everybody find you and your… Um, well, I'm not going to give them my address, <laughs> Bianca. Um, don't, don't give them your address. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and all my socials. Um, Elbows on the Table is the, is the name for my Instagram, for my food channel, my YouTube, but then just Sophia Esperanza for everything else. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for listening in and if you enjoyed this episode share it with a friend share it on social media we really appreciate it leave a comment below to let us know your thoughts and as always sending you love and light peace